Welcome to International and Global Logistics. This week we will explore international logistics to include its role within the retail industry with focus on ocean and air transportation as well as a few rules and regulations. Ocean transportation is a slow means of travel, especially if your shipment needs to arrive quickly. For example, the transit time from the United States to the Pacific Rim is 14 days, whereas the transit time from the United States to Europe is only 10 to 12 days. However, ocean transport can be a cost savings for a retail shipper. The documentation required for these ocean movements require an ocean bill of lading, which is similar to the domestic bill of lading discussed last week. Ocean carriers are those who own and operate the vessels or ships. There are four types of vessels. First is container ships. These ships carry 20-foot and 40-foot containers. Next is bulk carriers. These bulk carriers carry bulk liquid cargo. Next is row row vessels. These vessels carry items that can be rolled on or off of the vessel, such as automobiles. Lastly is break bulk. These vessels carry bulk commodities too large for containers. It is interesting to note that container loads can be full container, or FCL, or less than container loads, LCL, similar to full truckload or LTL loads in ground transportation. As far as freight services, there are two we will discuss briefly. First is non-vessel operating common carriers, or NVOCC, or also known as NVOs. Now, NVOs arrange for all the details to include the ocean bill of lading. They make their money based on the difference between the full container rate they pay to the steamship carriers and the LCL rate they charge the shipper. The other type of freight service provider is freight forwarders. Now, freight forwarders do everything an NVO does and more. The freight forwarders have networks and relationships with various entities such as ocean and air carriers and can pass these savings on to the shippers. Freight forwarders handle things such as consolidation of freight, they prepare documents and cargo insurance, they provide shipment visibility, warehousing, export packing, and much more. So you can see why freight forwarders are a valuable service in international trade, especially for the retail industry. Freight forwarders help get the product to the destination and on the shelf to the customer as soon as possible. Air transportation is much like domestic transportation, except that you will be dealing more with freight forwarders and those in other countries as well. These are known as international freight forwarders. International freight forwarders take care of everything from documentation to consolidation, just like those in North America. Now the important thing to remember is that additional fees and accessorial charges are incurred for these various services. Therefore, you must be diligent in finding out as much information as possible and know the right questions to ask in order to know what you are paying for and what is your risk and responsibility in the transaction. This will be discussed in further detail a little later in the presentation. Now, with all of this international trade comes new rules, regulations, and initiatives in an effort to provide more security at our ports. We will not discuss these in detail here, but more information can be found in the textbook regarding the following initiatives and programs. Automated Commercial Environment, the Bioterrorism Act, Container Security Initiative, the Trade Act of 2002, Free and Secure Trade, Customs Trade Partnership Against Terrorism. In international trade, you need to be aware of a term called incoterms. INCO term stands for International Commercial Terms. This is much like the domestic terms of sale or contract of sale. INCO terms provides a standardized code for risk and responsibility for parties engaged in international trade. What this means is that as a shipment moves from point A to point B, there is a transfer of ownership, risk, and responsibility as the shipment moves between points. These INCO terms identify the responsibilities of the buyer and seller. The International Chamber of Commerce website is a great place to visit to learn more about INCO terms. Another important aspect of negotiating a contract between a buyer and seller is the price and payment options. These details need to be discussed during contract negotiations, but more specifically, you need to know as a seller how and when you will be paid, as well as your responsibility in the movement of the goods. There are several options, but understanding the risk of these international transactions are vital, so do your due diligence. 
In conclusion, this presentation has given you a brief glimpse of international and global logistics to include ocean and air transportation. As with any movement of freight, there are a lot of details, negotiations, and documentation to complete to move a product or container domestically or internationally.